So these are 10 foot. I love long rods for lake fishing. 10 foot um, because um, A, you get greater, when you're indicator fishing, you just got a greater working distance between yourself and your fly. Um, particularly with trout fishing, if you get a fish that, because you were anchored, like fish like anchor ropes, so we can reach out like this and just and guide it away, guide from, it it. away from it, right? Mm. Um, you, I love to roll cast with indicators because it's a tangle prone system, right? Indicator, swivel sometimes, in Alberta, multiple flies. It's a, it's a recipe for a bird's nest, right? So one of my favorite casts is a roll cast. So you're just gonna pick the, pick the rod up like this, the line stays on the water, push to a high stop, hold it, wait for everything to flop over. The fly really never comes, Tang only never comes out free? of the water. Tangle free. Until I cast. You're gonna love the roll cast. It's the greatest cast ever invented. Right? And you can teach somebody to roll cast if they've never touched the fly rod. They can do a rudimentary, maybe rough roll cast and they can flop out 20 feet of line with an indicator, that's all you need. Because you don't want to have, what some get, some people cast indicators of bomb at, you know, that picnic table or something. <laughs> no, they won't. But they'll cast as far as they possibly can, and then a lot of, particularly with trout, the takes can be very subtle. Mm -hmm. Like an indicator, a tapered indicator usually sits this way on the water, and sometimes the indicator will just stand up and lie down. That's, That's take. it. That's take, right? Because the fish, as it starts to move away, starts to feel the tension and goes, that eh, wasn't. My food doesn't pull back, so I'm going to spit that out, right? So even if you, A, a distance you won't see it, but even if you're Superman and you can see it, you're not fast enough to react, right? So my general rule is the deeper we fish under an indicator, the closer the boat. So this is your standard floating line. Well, not really. We like, for indicator fishing, regardless of species, I like uh, lines like nymph tapers or fly lines designed to cast big flies, windy conditions. They have, if you look at a fly line, it's these are called weight forward, so they concentrate, depending on the line type and the manufacturer, usually in the first 30 feet, that's where the majority of the weight of the fly line is. The rest behind it's called running line, it's level. And it's designed to follow that head wherever it goes. So when you cast it, you it get shoot. that head out and shoot, shoot it, and the rest of the line goes roaring out the guides. So when you're chucking indicators and long leaders, that's hard for a fly line to carry. So a lot of your regular fly lines designed for dry flies are more about a delicate presentation. So that fly line turns over and that fly line's delicately on the water and doesn't spook fish. Well, with an indicator, we're not really cared about spooking fish per se. So we want a line that's going to push it over. So these nymph tapers, uh, lines to cast big streamers, lines to cast in really windy conditions, have a really aggressive front taper. So on that, um, on the... Um, change this up on the uh, um, fly line there's always a front taper where the front of the line tapers down to the loop where you put your leader on if that's long say about seven feet that dissipates casting energy gentle turnover delicate presentation on some of these indicators neat um, lines it may be three or four feet right so it's abrupt and it kind of boom punches things over right so it helps, it, the line helps you cast an indicator. Because an indicator is probably not a natural thing. So on here, I'll just show you what we've got. So this is a 10 foot indicator style leader, they're called. And this leader, if you feel that, see how it's thick? And then it gets thin. Mm -hmm. So yep. that's only a couple of feet. If you put a standard nine or 12 foot leader on, half of those leader, half of that leader is butt section, 50%, because again, it's primarily designed for fish and dry flies on rivers. And Turned, no indicators. And no indicators. Okay. Now thick stuff, as you probably know, thinks slower, sinks slower than thin stuff. So what you want, the most important thing with indicator fishing is when that fly and leader and indicator all lands on the water, that it sinks straight down below the indicator. So if you set it for 10 feet, it's going to hang at 10 feet. If you use a standard tapered leader, nine or 12 feet, it actually comes off the indicator in an arc like this because that thick butt section sinks slower than the thin tip section and droops. So you can have, I've had scenarios with uh, clients and students where I've had one person on, with this style of leader hooking fish every 10 minutes using chironomids. And the other guy, I remember one guy an hour and he hasn't got anything. Just because the line loops? Because he wasn't hanging, you know, and with chironomid fishing, 
you got to get it sometimes when they're really focused on a certain depth you got to get it on. down there right yeah. they eat a lot of them but they're not going to chase one across the parking lot here to go eat it right they just it's like jelly beans if they're right beside you you'll you'll graze away but if you just had a big dinner or whatever you're not going to run across the room and get one maybe or you're going to grab a handful and come back and pick away at them oh right? i might grab them <laughs> i love jelly so beans. this is so we set this up these leaders are 10 feet long i'm going to take off this uh tippet section because it's beat up so watch your head Put my, I always hang these around my neck because I lose them all the time so I'll just clip this off uh, in my indicator bag so one of the things we do or I do is you know when you set your indicator at a certain depth and you catch a fish you want to put the get the indicator back on at that depth right because you catch a fish sometimes, you go 10 or 15 minutes, you don't catch a fish, all of a sudden you're like, something's wrong. That little nagging voice in your head, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not right, it's not right. So we put, these are called bobber stoppers, and they're used for slip bobbers. And bass fishermen use them, if you've ever seen those big plunging weights with jigs they use, it's to keep that weight on the end of the line, or the way a bobber stopper works is the weighted lure pulls and sinks and the bobber stop because it's buoyant slides up the leader and eventually hits this stop and stops it and that sets your depth we can't i'd love to be able to do that with flies but our flies just don't weigh enough to do that or you'd have to wait an hour for it to sink so what we do with these after we drop the leader and this is something you put on first is you take the leader and i pick the one i want all right let's go with this black one it's got a little loop on it so I push that through the wire loop, a couple inches, and I just pull on that black, see how it's starting to yep. slide up, and folds onto the leader. Put a little bit of moisture so I don't lose anything, and it just eventually, that little tag end is going to pop out the other side. And that's just, it's not for to stop any indicators. No, just it's to, it's to mark the, the leader. So yep. when I set my indicator, I push this down to where the indicator is, yep. right? I catch a fish, I want to reset. I just go find the black mark on my, in this case, on my leader, put the indicator back there. I know I'm exactly the same spot I was last time. Only the paranoids survive. <laughs> so that's done. So that's 10 feet. So this, feet, let's say this is about two feet of butt section. The reason I like the butt section on here is between my indicator and my fly line, I have a little bit of backbone to help turn it over. And also this being thicker diameter material isn't gonna cut in to the welded loop. These fly lines aren't cheap, right? And thin diameter, there's some guys that like to just use like all eight pound and that certainly works. But with an eight pound leader, it's pretty fine. It'll cut into this. And of course it cuts it, Water gets in, the tip starts to sink. You know, you're screwing up a $90 fly line, right? So just a little peace of mind. So this, that's about seven feet. So we're gonna wanna hit, let's say 15 feet today, just as a start. So I've got about seven feet. I always have two feet to my final section off a swivel. So that's seven and nine. So what's the difference between that and 15 five. is five or six, right? Something like that. Is it five? It's I six. Just... So we're just gonna take some 2X fluorocarbon. This is approximate. There's three-ish, six-ish. Cut this off. And just use a triple surgeon's knot. You can use whatever knot you like. I just, for my feeble fingers, this works best. So through once. Twice three times. Got a mosquito in my ear. I hate that sound. And then just a little bit of, just a little lick. Some people, <laughs> it's like, okay, that's like Ghostbusters. That's a little much. Did you see that movie? <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm pretty old, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've, pretty I don't old? Think I've seen it. You seen Princess Bride though. But everyone should have seen that movie at some point. The first time I ever watched that movie, it's like uh, the first, have you ever seen Fargo? Yes. And you start Snow. based on true events, right? And you're like, oh, this is serious, right? And yeah. you start snickering and giggling, right? That whole accent. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so now we're going to use a bobber. So we'll put a, what color you like, kitty? Hot orange, bright green, um, pink. 
I think. I, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, stereotype, <laughs> bad me. I think orange is the easiest for me to sure. see. Orange. I'm not a fan of green or the yellow. And what I do is this, most people put their indicators on this way. I actually like the peg on the it's bottom. Bottom. So we're going to thread that through. Right. And then we're going to add a swivel. Try not to stand on that. And my swivels are... Everybody asks, where'd you find this thing? It's one of those things you just pick up over time and I don't know where. Just a, and the swivel serves a couple of purposes. Let's go, I don't have to have a Mondo big one today. These are like 12s, 14s, maybe a 10. Um, they spin, so they reduce tangles. When we're chronomid fishing, they actually flash, so they act like a flasher. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we've got 60,000 natural shiny chronomid pupa emerging. You, you're trying to, I always joke, we're trying to save insects' lives by getting our flies eaten. Right, so those, the rest, while that fish is sort of out of the, the frenzy for a while in our net, all those chronomids have a chance to, you know, go on, have go a career, up. children, all that stuff. I thought oh, they don't live very long. 24 hours, so they, yeah. they get it done. <laughs> and with walleye, we'll use the same 2x, walleye are not leader shy. So we'll go a couple of feet or so. And then, so we add that. I always like two feet. Between my indicator and swivel, um, it, it, it's like a little measurement system. You've got a quick two-foot ruler built in, if you think about it. So if you want to go eight feet, just fold the leader four times and you have eight feet, right? There's a, we can also set these leaders a little more approximate when we get out there. using That's what this little weight's for. And then we tie that on and then we're going to add our fly. I'm so proud that you don't use your teeth for trimming the line. I don't know how people do it. <laughs> I just makes my eh. it's one of those things. It's, it's a it's bad for your teeth, and b it's uh, it just feels I don't know. Just, I don't like the feeling. I don't like the feeling in my mouth. It's kind of ugh. okay. So see, I got more reels in here. The pike stuff. All right. So in I got all my pike flies. So in here, although this may surprise you, but most people fish bait for. Uh, you know, gear fishermen fish minnows and stuff for walleye, but they're actually a, an insect eater too. There's, I remember catching a walleye that, as I bring it up to the boat, it pukes out this green cloud, right? And I'd look down, i get in the water, there had to be over 200 scuds the thing had puked out. Right? Crazy. No, nobody, I don't even fish scuds for them. <laughs> we fish flies. So chartreuse and white's always good. So this is a simple, this is just a llama dubbing, like a dubbing brush that I wind up the shank. I put a little tuft of marabou on top. It's balanced, so it's going to hang like a jig. You can also strip these flies, right, with a big heavy tungsten bead on it to make it balance. You want to keep your walleye flies pretty simple uh, because they're not selective like a, well, they can, be, they can be moody, but they're not like a trout as far as what you're used to with that. And also there's pike in these waters. And uh, you don't want to spend a lot of time because we don't. I don't fish wire for walleye, even though they got teeth. They seem to like. Uh, I think the fly behaves better on mono or, or fluoro in this case than um, um, wire. So when a pike comes in and bites this, it's bye bye fly usually, right? So don't spend a lot of time on flies because you're going to lose them, right? You don't want to tie something for 10 minutes and like in one millisecond it's gone. You're like, oh no! So dead simple. This is a non-slip loop knot we tie. So what happens is when this comes tight... Just gives a little bit of movement? Yeah, the, the fly's got freedom of movement, so it'll... Oh, bad habits here because I've got old tippet on there from before. Somewhere in there I can see it. So that fly, when it gets wet, it's going to hang like that, right? This, the water supports it a little better, so it'll sit horizontally like this. And when you cast and strip these things, they jig. Well, that's what I thought we were mm. going to do is, is the cast and we can, bring in. We can, but like this... Like they would want movement instead of something that's just more sitting they are a very, a little bit with the current. They are very, um, like I say, they're subtle feeders. Um, they inhale their prey, so even though when we get one, you'll see them 
impressive set of teeth they carry. Like, you're not going to put your thumb in that mouth. But they don't feed like a pike. They don't crush. Well, you get the odd one that's pretty fired up and will eat aggressively. Yeah. But for the most part, they just inhale, hold it for a two count, and if you don't recognize them, poof, it's gone. Right? So that's why we fish. You know, when, when I started to learn to walleye fish, when I moved out here, I wanted to catch one because I never caught one. It's kind of like, why can't you catch one? And nobody on the fly did it, so I started, I tried to ask local fly guys, they didn't do it, or I couldn't find out any information. So I started asking, hanging out at the fishing hole, which is a local uh, shop here, asking the walleye guys, going over into the dark side, I call it, where fly guys aren't, fly people aren't supposed to go. And what's the best, which, which jigs work best? What colors work best? What, how does this set up? So they fish jigs vertically, so yeah. we can do that with that fast sinking line method. They fish slip bobbers. Well, a strike indicator rig's a slip it's bobber. Thing. It's the yep. same thing. Or they crankbait. They pull and strip. So we can pull and strip too. So we may give that a try. I've got that to set up, right? So we'll keep our options open. But for me, this indicator method, and it's lazy fishing. You sit with your feet crossed. You make a roll cast. No long casts. And it works. And they they swim around in schools. So schools, if one yeah. bites, usually you find one. The yeah, we'll use the electronics to find them. They stick out on a sounder pretty good. Yeah. All right. And they like the same thing as trout. So they like drop offs, edges of weeds, points of land, all that stuff. And this lake's got some great structure that way. I wish I knew as much stuff as you do. Well, I don't I have, know I have anything. A sad life. <laughs> no, I actually know nothing. You'll know more today then. So we'll get this one done. We'll get rods set up. Rods, rods set up. So I got tired of filming, <laughs> grab the other rod, and what do you know? I'm catching the first fish that we're going for. I think that's, this is what we're going for, right? Oh. oh, I think it's a wally. It's a wally! It's not the very, biggest one on the planet, but... My very first walleye. Those gill plates would be. Very first walleye, not very big, roughly around what? 